Welcome back to another episode of Be A Better Game Dev. In this episode we are going to be taking a look at how you can actually improve your debugging skills a little bit with making use of the Blueprint debugging tools that we have available in Unreal Engine. And with that we're going to be going through with things like the data flow, the cult stack, showing you how you can keep track of your breakpoints and showing also your execution trains among other things as keeping track of your different objects and variables that you might have in your scene to to find your issues as quickly as possible so let's check it out welcome back so in this video we are going to be checking out how we can take our debugging to the next level in software development and game development as well uh, debugging is a crucial critical tool to uh, have your game and code running as you expect it to. It is essential for, for troubleshooting and finding problems in your code. So I've done tutorials in the past uh, on the topic of debugging and today we're going to be enhancing upon that a little bit. So for that I've created some code here inside of my third person character and I'm gonna set a breakpoint over here and then we're just gonna run our code and have that code execute and stop our breakpoint. Now what we're going to be doing today is we're going to make use of our Blueprint debugging tools. And these you can access either by going to, in this case you have in your third person map, you have tools available to you. And you can go to debug and choose Blueprint debugger. But you can also access this from another Blueprint like this one. You can see here we don't have tools available, but you can go to debug and click on uh, Blueprint debugger and you get it over here. So th that is how you uh, start it off uh, when you need access to it. Now, depending on how you started it, if you started it from your tools or if you started it from the debug window, uh, this might look a little bit different here uh, because the debug tools here are set up in such a way that you have a few different options. If you click on window, you can see you have a call stack and you have a data flow. Uh, the call stack is the window over here to the left where you can see currently these things. And to the right, right here, we have the data flow. And in this case, uh, we started the Blueprint debugging tool from our third person uh, character, which means that it's going to be using that as its filter here uh, for which uh, class it will be debugging. If we were to choose none here, for example, you can see we get no instances of this Blueprint in this. Uh, let's see if we can move this out a little bit in, the, in existence. So, so no Blueprint is chosen here. but. Going in here, you can actually select whatever Blueprint uh, class that you want to make use of at all. So if we go back and choose our third person character, you can see that what we currently have going on here is uh, a few things. We have a yellow arrow here. This is denoting that this is where our breakpoint took place. And inside of that, you can just expand it and you can see that you have access to all of this information here. So this information will be in real time updated as you uh, run your code and step through it. So that's that's one part. But the part that we're going to be looking at first is actually if we go to the call stack. The call stack is a a hierarchy of uh, different functions and events and how they were called in sequence. So to visualize this, I've created a little bit of an example here. So on the event key of one here, we have a function that's being called, that's called function one. So we can see here in our call stack, we have that we first have a one key. So that's the event that was triggered over here. And if we were to click on it, it will take us to that point in the code as well. Uh, if we click on event graph over here, you can see that this is the function that is going to be running. Now, if we were to debug here, and you can debug either by the normal debugs up here, and also the same over here. Doesn't really matter, it's the same. But if we were to step into this code now, we can see that we're going into function one, which in turn is going to be calling function two. Now you can see we have another level added to our call stack, which is showing that we have the event graph over here and we have a function one over here being called. And as we keep going through like this, you can see that we have more code that's being executed and we get deeper and deeper and we get more layers on our stack, right? So what is the purpose or what is the, the main benefit of having something like this? Well, when you uh, debug around in Blueprints normally and you step through the code, uh, you might have, if you're doing object-oriented code, you might have a function or a class or something that's happening many, many times 
uh, from many different points. Uh, it could be like different places that they're called from. It's being executed on multiple different actors, things of that nature, right? So if we have something like, uh, let's see here, our event graph. Let's remove this breakpoint for now. If we were to have something like this, here we have an event where we're going to be attempting to destroy something. In this case, it's just going to be destroying an actor of a type reference. And this reference over here is currently set to be, <clears throat> doesn't show anything here, but if we go into our character over here and we scroll down to over here, we can see that our actor reference here is a chamfer cube. This is actually this blue cube over here. So if I were to run this, a game and press 2, you can see that we're deleting that cube, right? Nothing really special about that. But this attempt to destroy here might be coming to this code without having that reference set, for example, right? So in this case here, I have another piece of code. I have a three event, and after that, I clear out the reference that we have, and then I try to destroy this uh, actor reference. So the same thing, I press 3, we see nothing happens, but when we stop, we get an error saying that we had a runtime error of access none. So we might be like thinking, ah, at some point in the code, I'm running into this problem where um, I'm trying to destroy my, my cube and it doesn't work for some reason, right? Well, what do you want to do? You add a breakpoint to where you have the issue. In this case, it's the destroy actor. And we run the code, we press our key and we uh, encounter our blueprint uh, debug uh, breakpoint. Okay, now going to our blueprint debugger tools, you can now see that we have a call stack here. And we can see that we're attempting to destroy inside of this third person character, which in turn was called by the third person character event graph, which in turn was called by the third person character three event. And then other than that, we can also see that there's native C++ code being called here, which is uh, not something that's visible straight up like this, but for blueprint debugging, that won't really be a problem in most cases. So in this specific case, we are able to see that, ah, okay. So the specific time that I'm actually trying to delete this and I'm getting this problem, the reason is because I'm calling it over here and ah, okay, I'm clearing out the reference. Okay, that makes sense, right? So that's what call stack generally is useful for. You can locate a place where you have a problem and then set a breakpoint there and then when you end up in that situation when you know that it's going to go wrong you can backtrack through your call stack and see if you can find the problem along the way right moving on uh, if we go into our third person character again and we put a breakpoint here on a new piece of code here we can see I have some code here running that's going to be adding an actor to an array. Uh, if we were to run this code and press 4, you can see that if we go back to our blueprint uh, debugging tools again, and instead of being in the call stack part, we go to the data flow part, uh, we can see a few things. Uh, first of all, we have two different uh, sections here. The first one here is called breakpoints. This one will keep track of all the different breakpoints that you have. So if you have been like trying to debug uh, some issue uh, at a lot of different levels in a lot of different places, uh, you can see the breakpoints here and you can even navigate to them by clicking on them. So that's a good way to keep track of where your breakpoints are and if you want to remove some and stuff like that. Uh, in addition to that, we also have, if we go into our third person character, I showed you that you have all of the different um, Actually, let's go back to the other more relevant uh, breakpoint. Uh, we can see that we have all of the different uh, variables that are contained within uh, of this blueprint in this case. So we can keep track of things. So here I put some uh, example code. We go in here, we just add a, an actor to an actor of arrays. And if we step through this, we can see that in real, re real time, it is getting updated so that when we click here, our array of class actors, you can see we have now one and it's containing an actor. If we continue with the code, we can go in here. We're adding a sky sphere. You can see that we now have a sky sphere added and we continue like this and we now add a AI controller and we now have another AI controller. So you can go through this code and you can see it update as you're going along, right? Again, if we were to have something like, uh, 
uh, let's see, running like this, and we have our blueprint, and we just want to uh, see how this array of class actors change, and we know that that's what's going on here. We don't have to de debug through the whole thing. It keeps updated as your code is executing, right? So after having run this first function, we have the, our actor. After running the second one, we have our sky sphere. After running the third one, we have our AI controller. So that's how you can keep track of your data as you're uh, debugging through all of it. In addition to that, you can also go and check out your execution trace. The execution trace uh, has a bunch of different filters to it. Um, you, you can you can uh, remove certain things from from this if you want to. Um, actually, not not the trace itself. You, this this window has a few different things. If you take the trace, the trace is itself is going to go away. Uh, but uh, in this execution trace, you have a few different. Uh, a bit more detailed information about the nodes that are executing as opposed to the call stack, for example. The call stack is very good because you can use the call stack to see the, the specific levels that are being called from functions and events uh, as the code is being run through. Uh, the execution trace will be much more detailed and we can navigate to all of the different parts uh, just like the call stack by just clicking on them. So if we click here, we can see that we're actually going to the print string and we can see that there's an arrow here showing that that's actually where we are in the execution of the code flow. We can see also that there is a left arrow here showing that this is uh, some code that we've passed. So this, in this case, is showing off this function over here, the add AI controller. Clicking on that, we can see a return node inside of the AI controller. You can see that we actually get multiple um, instances of the log for this. Before that, we have an add. After that, we have, or before we have a, add AI controller to our array node. And then we go out and we come out into the sky sphere and so on. So uh, this is a way for you to step through your code in a more detailed manner if that is needed uh, and the the call stack itself is not enough this in, this uh, window also contains a bunch of different information you can see ids and stuff like that you can also see times i believe uh, you can see there 1.67 seconds so you can get some kind of uh, reference i'm not sure how accurate it is to see uh, as a measure of performance, but you can see uh, some some kind of timestamps for uh, when the different parts were executing as well. Um, if nothing else, it can be used as a reference note to see when your code flow is running different parts, if you're expecting them to be sequential, but they're not actually, you know? that sort of thing. Um, so yeah, that, that's also a very good thing to keep in mind of. So now I've added a little bit more code to this project. So if we press play, we can see that this is a main menu widget up here in text as above us. <laughs> this is essentially just a simple widget that we have added. And the reason for this, that we have this is because now when we press our five key here, we want to call on our widget and say, we want to do something inside of it. So we debug inside of it and we see that our blueprint debugger is gone. What's going on here? We'll just go back to our third person character. We see it over here. Ah, okay, it's just docked over here. We're, we can just undock it and then have it as a free flowing window. And that way we can make use of it in our wi widget, right? No, it disappears when we go into the widget. Okay, what's going on here? Is it because we have our third person character and we need to show our widget? No, that doesn't change anything either. Uh, this is a little bit of a finicky behavior, uh, which I want to make you aware of that it exists. Essentially, it, it uh, it lives in its own instance where it uh, sort of was created and placed, but only under certain circumstances. So if we were to, for example, in this case, close this down and go inside our main menu widget and we go to debug and choose blueprint debugger, if we had the other window still docked, it would just be moving over to a third person character. But now you can see that the window is actually existing and persisting through our different tab clicks, right? So something to be aware of, and it might feel a little bit frustrating if you're starting out. So hopefully this will give you a little bit over that hump so you can focus on actually troubleshooting your problems themselves. But yeah, so now we're inside of this widget here. Now we can go through its code here. We can see, okay, we have an integer value. We go through, we add something to it, we set it, okay, it gets updated, and we can keep track of all our different things here as well. So uh, these things exist within a 
a filter of the objects that you're uh, trying to work with, which, uh, depending on how many objects you have, might be uh, fine. Uh, if you want to have a specific object, let's say you had a bunch of different widgets that were all main menu, you could go through your uh, filter up here to make sure that you're only executing on a specific uh, or actually so when your uh, breakpoints run and you debug through that you're running through that instance of the widget or the other class that you're debugging uh, itself uh, but if you were to have multiple main widgets uh, main menu widgets in this case they would also all show up here if you didn't have a filter up here uh, so you can debug them and show them all in parallel and compare them to each other, which also has some value to it, right? Because maybe you have four different classes of um, uh, uh, four different objects of a class, and one of them is weird, and you want to see why. Maybe you can see the differences here and then correlate it back with your call stack or some of the other things that we've gone through uh, to see what the actual error is. So yeah. I hope that this brief overview of the debugging tools will allow your debugging to be slightly more proficient and helpful. I feel that the call stack is actually a very important part of debugging. I use it in a lot of different other languages when I debug, so uh, hopefully that at least will prove useful to you in the future. Anyway, that's going to be all for now. Keep on learning. Take care. A big thank you to all of you who like, comment, subscribe and share my videos, or through other means support this channel. You are what makes this channel grow and become a resource for other people to learn from.